It has been, I don't know, four, maybe five months since I did a dedicated Blue Protocol video. And that is because there really hasn't been much in the way of Blue Protocol information released. But that does not mean that there is not, in fact, information pertaining to the game that we have not covered. Now, Blue Protocol is a very beautiful upcoming anime MMORPG being developed and published both by Bandai Namco. These are the people behind Code Vein, God Eater 3, The Tales of Games. So they have a history of very successful JRPGs, specifically with that anime aesthetic. So my expectation a lot of players' expectations are very high. So today we are going to be taking a look at what Blue Protocol is, what we can expect from the game, when we can expect the game to come out, if there are going to be any future closed beta tests, whether or not the games are going to be paid to win, literally everything I can think of everything that was asked over on our Blue Protocol subreddit, which if you guys are not already a part of, you should definitely become because honestly, it is the most active, largest Blue Protocol community online. So let's start this off by talking about what Blue Protocol is. This is an anime inspired MMORPG. Again, it is being developed by Bandai Namco. These are developers that have a very, very long history with successful anime inspired JRPGs. So knowing that this game as the backing of a AAA game developer, as opposed to indie MMOs, as opposed to first time developers is reassuring. What is Blue Protocol's business model? There are people out there that think that the game is going to be a buy to play MMO or a pay to play MMO because it is being developed and published by a triple A dev. The reality of it is this game is going to be entirely free to play, meaning that you are not required to buy into the game. You don't have to pay any type of monthly recurring fee. It's completely free to play for as long as you want to. Now is Blue Protocol open world or is it instanced? There there are some people that are of the impression that this is going to be an instance hub MMO like uh, Fantasy Star Online 2, when the reality of it is it is not. This game actually employs segregated zones. This is in essence what Blade and Soul and Final Fantasy 14 utilizes, which are small loading screens that disconnect the areas from one another. There are going to be more than a handful of players on your screen at any time. Granted, the world itself outside of the cities, the cities by the way, can hold, I think they mentioned at the time, 100 players total in any given channel. So at the minimum, there are going to be a hundred different players that are capable of being on screen at any given time. And then when you leave the cities, there are going to be a cap of 20 to 30 players per channel. Again, this is not entirely confirmed yet. This will differ, I'm assuming, depending on the load that they experience during their future tests. Now, what type of combat Blue Protocol employs is one of the more important questions on a lot of players' minds. I know that there are plenty of people out there that don't like tab target combat. I know there are plenty of people out there that don't like action combat. But the truth of the matter is that Blue Protocol is going to employ a true action combat system. This is something that is more like Terra or Black Desert Online as opposed to something like Blade and Soul, which requires uh, an enemy for specific abilities. You have the ability to freely aim at any monster with your left click. So your ability to successfully hit a target is entirely dependent on you and your aim. So, you know, you're going to be required to possess a certain level of aim if you want to be efficient. Now, according to recent updates from the Blue Protocol developer Twitter, they announced or revealed rather that they are going to be including additional combat mechanics into the game. Specifically, the ones that they went on to elaborate on were the dodge and parry mechanics. What this means is that you're going to be able to actively dodge enemy abilities, and you're also going to be able to parry them as well. So players that have fast response times are going to excel above those that don't. Now, since Bamco are still in the process of developing new features and new combat mechanics for the game, there is no doubt that there are going to be further alterations and further additions made to the combat system over the development process. Another very important question is, is Blue Protocol going to be pay to win? Because that is going to turn pretty much the entire player base off. And honestly, from the closed beta that both Mrs. Sticks and I played, the answer is not that I'm aware of. But at the same time, while they did confirm there will be nothing but cosmetic items specifically within the cash shop, that doesn't mean that they have no intentions of introducing other things at a later date 
or once the game officially launches. But at least currently, they do not have any specific VIP memberships. They do not have any items available in the cash shop that will provide you the option of advancing ahead of other players at an increased rate or pace. So what specifically makes Blue Protocol different to the MMOs we already have available? That's a good question as well. Blue Protocol is one of the few anime MMORPGs that are currently in development and is going to be one of the few anime MMOs that are currently left because there are just so many of them that are shutting down that we really aren't going to have all that many to actually play going in the future anyway. Now, where the majority of MMOs allow you to go out and do quests that reward you with gear, where you tackle dungeons, you tackle raids, some games allow you to uh, acquire gear from PvP, Blue Protocol does none of that. Blue Protocol has you acquire all of your gear via crafting. So if you hate crafting, then you're gonna be screwed because that's the only way of acquiring gear. You go out, you obtain materials via questing, you can find materials out in the open world in the field, you can trade materials with other players, you can farm materials in dungeons, you can farm them in raids. Those materials that you ultimately farm are going to affect the kind of gear that you can craft. So whether you have the best in slot gear is going to be entirely dependent on whether or not you're farming enough. And I think that is both very innovative because it's something that isn't really done, but at the same time I hate crafting, so that's a, a negative for me too. Now does Blue Protocol have character creation? I know that is something that is often asked because a lot of people enjoy creating their characters the way they want to. And yeah, Blue Protocol actually has quite an extensive character creator. I think I messed around with it for probably 20, maybe 30 minutes straight when I was streaming it. And ever since then, they have made repeated enhancements and additions to the character creator. They went on to add additional sliders, additional customization options, the ability to alter various different parts of your hair and hair color. And given that your avatar that you create in game is in essence a reflection of you, providing additional customization options in the form of sliders is always a step in the right direction because that is going to directly affect the personality of your character and how it ultimately ends up being a reflection of you in game. Are there classes in Blue Protocol? That is important to note before going into it because a lot of people like doing their research in advance. And yeah, there are currently as of the beta test and as of the official launch, at least for what we know of, four confirmed classes. We have the Aegis Fighter, which uses a sword and shield. We have the Twin Striker, which uses dual axes. We have the Blast Archer that wields a bow and the Spellcaster, which wields elemental magic via their stave. And let me tell you, the Spellcaster is by far the coolest looking class in the game by leaps and bounds. Now I was forced to go Archer when I stream this by chat because you guys are heartless human beings, but you guys can bet that I'm going to go mage when I get the opportunity to next. Now, will Blue Protocol have additional classes or are we going to be stuck with those four in specific? That is also important because it is ultimately going to affect how long players want to play for and if players are going to re-roll and tackle the same content again. Now, as of the last beta test, there were players that actually went and data mined information specifically pertaining to additional classes. There were, I think, over 20 classes in total that were being actively developed, or at least were in theory going to potentially begin the development process. And then after which Bandai Namco came out and they went on to confirm that they are hard at work on additional classes. They didn't go and confirm which classes in specific, but they were going to include additional classes sometime after the official launch of the game. Now, how are Blue Protocol's graphics? They are gorgeous. Seriously, like these graphics right here are perhaps the best that the anime genre has to offer. Blue Protocol's environments look like something out of God Eater 3 or Code Vein. The zones look absolutely stunning. The, the character models, the abilities look fluid, they look flashy, but they don't look over the top. What types of PvE modes are going to be present within the game? This is something that both Mrs. Sticks and I were concerned with because if a game does not have dungeons, something like Black Desert Online, then we're not really interested in doing them because we like dungeon content, we like raid content, content that requires players to get together and tackle it competitively. And while Blue Protocol is going to have your traditional open world content in the form of questing and missions, it is going to have various types of dungeons to do. It is going to have various types of raids to do and PVP, but not player versus player, instead party versus party. These are going to be competitive group 
content that pits parties against other parties in a PVE arena. There's gonna be a leaderboard and being at the top of the leaderboard guarantees certain items, certain rewards. Now the dungeons, interestingly enough, are going to be scaled to the number of players within the party, which means that you can tackle dungeons solo if you want to, but for every player that joins your group, it is going to get decidedly more difficult. As for the raids, I think they're going to be more similar to uh, Final Fantasy XIV's raids as opposed to World of Warcraft's raids since they went on to claim that the raid was actually one very large boss encounter and that is how typically Final Fantasy XIV tackles their raids. Now, what types of PvP content are gonna be available in Blue Protocol? And the answer to that is nil, zilt, none, none whatsoever. Japanese players have taught us, like within Final Fantasy XIV, like within PSO2, they're just not really interested in player versus player your combat. So Bandai Namco are opting out of any type of PvP content, but at the same time, it's better to have no PvP content than the half-assed PvP content that is present in some games. Now, what platforms is Blue Protocol going to be launching on? That is a good question. Currently, it is scheduled to be launching onto PC and Bandai Namco have went on to claim that they are working on a console release of the game sometime in the future. They don't know when they're going to be able to release a console version. They don't even know what console versions specifically are going to receive this game, whether it's going to be the PS4 and the PS5, whether it'll be both PlayStation systems and an Xbox system or Switch system. But the one thing that they are certain of is that it is going to have no mobile compatibility whatsoever. Now, another important question here is, will Blue Protocol launch onto Steam? And the answer to that is we unfortunately have no idea, given that a lot of Bandai Namco's games do in fact release onto Steam. Team, it is essentially a given, especially considering this is going to be an MMO and disregarding the Steam platform altogether would effectively stifle and inhibit the game's success. Now, is Blue Protocol going to have cross-platform functionality? That is a great question. I honestly do not know if Blue Protocol is gonna be cross-platform compatible between PC and consoles. We also don't even know if it's gonna be cross-platform between whatever their official launcher of the game is and the Steam version if they ultimately release the Steam version. Now, is there another upcoming closed beta test? Currently, as of April 25th, 2021, there is no confirmed upcoming closed beta test for the game, but they have confirmed that they do want to work on other closed beta tests in the future. And let's be honest here, if they don't test this again, they're literally going to release it in the state that it is in and players might be incredibly upset with that final product. So by that logic, you should definitely expect additional closed beta tests sometime during the year. And for those of you that are interested, we have a full guide covering how to go ahead and apply for the closed beta test if you haven't already. Now, is Blue Protocol going to be releasing globally? This is probably the most requested question to have answered. And I've answered it a plethora of times already, but I'm going to go ahead here and answer it again. Bandai Namco have confirmed that they have expectations of releasing within Japan initially, and then they expect to release within North America and Europe following the year after. They already have a localization director for English speaking countries, and people data mined various different languages during the last closed beta test, one of which happened to be English. So we're likely already a ways through the localization process already. Is Blue Protocol going to be releasing within 2021? This is probably the second most requested question I receive, and the answer is both yes and no. Yes, the game, if everything goes according to plan, is going to be releasing within its country of origin in 2021, its country of origin being Japan. But as mentioned just literally seconds ago, this game will be launching the year after in North America and Europe and other places around the world. So no, it is not going to be releasing in 2021 for us specifically, but we will be able to play it via a VPN. Now, is Blue Protocol going to require a powerful computer? The answer to that is not really. Due to their limitations imposed on how many players can be on screen at any given time, it's not going to require nearly as many as it would have had they allowed hundreds of players concurrently on your screen. And looking at the stats that they revealed for the game, it really doesn't look like you're gonna require anything too powerful. Will Blue Protocol have a cash shop? Yes, it will. It's going to have a fully functional, in their words, cosmetic only cash shop, which means that you're going to be able to buy a surplus of different outfits, maybe different types of mounts via the cash shop as well, since mounts are technically aesthetic, unless they provide things like increased movement speed or anything, but I really don't think many MMOs do that in this day and age. One thing worth noting 
is that much like Final Fantasy 14, I'm sure the majority of the really, really exceptional looking outfits are going to be available exclusively via the cash shop, which, you know, is perfectly fine. You guys got to fund your game however you can, right? Now, is Blue Protocol going to have player housing? That is a good question. They did actually go on to note that they are looking to include a form of player housing sometime in the future, but it is not a feature that they have even really begun to work on yet. Now, this is a feature that will very likely not be available in the game when the game fully releases, but it is definitely something that they are interested in implementing after the fact. Will Blue Protocol have a functional guild system? The answer to that is yes. While there was no active guild system present during the alpha or the beta test, they have confirmed that there will be a functional one present during both the next beta test and when the game officially launches. Now, what features are currently in development? That is a very good question. During their last wave of feedback, they went on to ask players what they ultimately wanted to see added into the game. And this gave us a look at what we could theoretically expect from it. Things like living content in the form of player housing, fishing and other life skills, various types of mini games, increased freedom and the addition of character creation parts, new classes, increased number of imagine, which are the unique little monster things that you use both for combat and for crafting, guilds, PVP, enhanced quests, a larger selection of dungeons to run, more raid content, a deeper arena system, more unique classes, a lot more costumes and accessories seasonal events and a photo mode which they actually recently confirmed they are not only in the process of working on, but also added into the game. And finally, how can I remain updated with regards to Blue Protocol? Not only do they have an official website that you can go to to receive the latest news, but they update their Twitter much more frequently, especially with regards to the small little additions, the small little enhancements that they're working on. And if you don't want to go ahead and follow them on Twitter, then you can subscribe to our channel because we cover pretty much everything related to Blue Protocol when it's released. Or you can subscribe to our subreddit which has the information even before we go ahead and do a dedicated video on it and that is everything that we have to discuss with regards to blue protocol these are the things that you should know going into 2020 these are the things that you should be excited for or concerned for if they don't necessarily meet your expectations but let me know down in the comment section below or let bandai namco know down in the comment section below because they are no doubt going to be reading the comment section of this video what you want to see from the game what you expect expect from the game what you don't want to see from the game and let's talk about it and let's hope that we have the ability here to influence what ultimately ends up happening with the the end result of the game anyway guys thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you guys next time Peace.